Hello, everybody. How are you doing? I am back. Hopefully there are no audio issues like I thought I was having before. I'm back to share some news with you, things going on in our world. There have been quite a few things going on, and I want to just go ahead and get into it right now. Let, let's let's look at these stories, and I will look at every comment in the comment section. Let me know what you think about all of the, all of this stuff going on. Okay, so this is the first story that I want to talk about. I actually talked about this yesterday, but I had some audio issues and I wasn't able to upload the video. So we're, I'm going over it again. Her name is Audrey Cunningham. She was just 11 years old, 11 years old, and a, an arrest has been made. This man has been arrested. He was actually a family friend. He lived in the same area and he was walking her to school and she didn't show up. He was supposed to. And they found her body in the river. Do I have to really say what he did? We know what he did. What do they always do? He graped her, an 11-year-old little girl. This man has a history. Look at the, the picture. He has a swastika, a swastika on his um, arm. So you already know what he associates with, the, probably the KKK type of stuff. He doesn't like black people or Jewish people. And he was a friend of the family. I thought about everything. I wondered, was her father or mother also down with that? But at the end of the day, that's a little 11 year old girl. Children are innocent. They are molded. They grow in this world. They are brought into this world and they're children. She was a little girl. This guy had a history of being violent. And I also thought the irony of a man with a swastika on his arm who, who believes in white supremacy, protect the white woman. But what did he do to a little white girl, a blonde haired little white girl? You know what he did to her. And it's pretty early in the morning and I can't go off like I want to go off. Stories like this piss me off something serious because it's always the same outrage. Everybody gets mad. I heard lock him up and put away the key. Don't just lock him up. Give him the death penalty. Get rid of them. Clean it up. Get rid of them. Grape is a serious crime, especially towards a child. And women, come on, I feel we got to fight. We know what it's like. You know the pain. A little girl. And I, you know, I don't always like to go into detail, but I feel like if people could close their eyes, like in that movie, A Time to K-I-L-L, and actually imagine what she's going through, the fear, the literal, literal physical trauma of a full grown man shoving himself in her, which hurts, screaming, bleeding, crying, and he wants to try to get rid of evidence. So he might have. I don't want to say how he might have got, you know, take, take, took uh, certain words I can't say on here. Maybe at the end of the day, he, he took her out. He took her out. He took her life. She won't be able to have children. She won't be able to have a husband. She won't. She's not here on the earth. This man. Now, they said that he might be charged with capital murder. And I always find it interesting how um, the media doesn't want to tell the details of what we know he did It's almost am I the only one because I don't know if I'm weird or something where I want the public to know if he graped her she's gone so I don't want to hear us about protecting the victim if people cared about protecting victims then there would be some type of justice for victims voices beyond the grave for people to think about what they went through and have empathy and get rid of them Take him out the way he took her out. You know what I'm saying? Take him out. Why does he get to live? When men go to jail, they get meals. They have internet, TV, people who write them, relationships with other men in jail. That's not justice. Justice, ironically, for a nation that claims to be a Christian nation, but doesn't even follow the law within the Bible that said eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. So if that's really the case, he took her out, he graped her, grape him and then take him out or a public hanging. I heard people say, give him castration. That's not good enough for me. He's if he walks the earth, that's not justice. 
Justice is taking his life the way he took her life. And even graping him before you take his life so he can see what it feels like, literally. That's how. Well, that's what I believe in. I believe grape and, and murder are the highest crimes. Okay, that's just how I feel, especially towards children. Okay, so I'm going to read you more of the story. He has been arrested, but she's not going to go to school. She's gone off the earth. It's no justice if he gets to stay living. That's not justice. So let me read to you more of the story on what happened. Okay. Don Stephen McDougal, who's 42 years old, has been named as a person of interest. He has been arrested. He was arrested yesterday in Audrey Cunningham's mysterious disappearance on February 15th. Okay. He lived in a trailer behind her father's home in Livingston, a small town about an hour away from Houston. Okay. Um, they plan on charging him with capital murder. She was reported missing by her school officials who said she never showed up last Thursday. Okay. He has a swastika tattoo on his left shoulder. He was supposed to bring her to the bus stop that day. Okay. Um, he was the last person who saw her before she dropped out of sight. But you're not going to believe this. He has a criminal history already of trying to target children, which so many people are asking, why on earth would your parents have you around this man? Okay. So her father made a post saying that my daughter is missing. She didn't make it to the bus. Can you imagine a parent's nightmare to hear we found your baby in the river? Then you're going to get more details, I guarantee you, of having to do a semen test from being graped and how, you know, my goodness gracious. Okay. His, his criminal history is an extensive one. He has an arrest record dating back more than a two decades ago, including convictions for other things such as theft, driving, intoxicated, unauthorized use of a vehicle, drug possession, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and the enticement of a child. His most recent conviction was in 2020 with the harassment charge, which he stayed in a week in Harris County Jail. The victim in that case, Ted Boer, said that he remembered him as a problem employee with a bad attitude and a hot temper. He had not been aware, though, that the little girl was missing. He said that he actually came at me. He threatened to K.I.L. me, to murk me, and everything over $50. Okay, he said that um, he has he's a bad apple. He's not worth a damn. He's 67 years old, the man who said this, and he... Um, Okay, so basically they're talking about the crimes that he's already been known to commit, hot temper, a drunk, and he already was in trouble before with the law for trying to entice a child. So now this man was a friend of the family associating with filth like this. Obviously, most people still don't think he's going to hurt my daughter if you have a friendship with them. Now this little girl has been taken away from the earth and I'm tired of society boo-hooing over it. And then we go on and then next week it's another one. And then next week it's another one. And then next week it's another one. You haven't put the fear of God into them. You haven't put fear in them, period. And the reason is because you do not execute them. You don't castrate them. You don't put a mark on their forehead to let everybody know like a scarlet letter what they are and what they've done. But if it were up to me, we wouldn't be doing any of that because we would have an execution. We would have our lawyers and scientists do all the DNA testing to make sure we know for a fact they did the grape, they did the crime, and then we, we execute within at least three months, max. There, I don't need, you don't need to be around and it's not fair for victims. There needs to be a law for the voices, for the victims beyond the grave where people can have empathy, close their eyes and imagine what they went through. A scared little girl walking with an older man that she thinks is her family friend. God knows what he said and did to her. Do I have to go into detail? Tearing everything off of her and graping her, screaming to the top of her lungs. 
and then taking her out, maybe by strangulation or with an object or drowning her since she was in the river. Imagine what the hell that was like for her. If you, if more people did, I would think the law would look a little bit different, save the morality and religious stuff when it comes to the death penalty. Because the Bible said an eye for an eye for cases. But I am going to show you something where it actually is a little confusing. And y'all are going to be real pissed with me for showing what I'm going to show out of the Bible. But guess what? You can bring religion into anything, but this is man's law that needs to be put on the earth, that they, they're going. And whatever happens beyond that is between them and God. So let me move on to the next story. And you're seeing many different topics up here. Some stuff is good. Some stuff is horrific. But believe me, I care about each story. And I'm really sad and that that happened to that little girl. She didn't deserve that. And most of all, I want to see a change in the justice system because I'm tired of it every month. It's like, what's going to change here? The people need to do something. Go to the government. Period. For laws to be changed. Now we have Ashley Simpson, who I love, my fellow Libra sister. All the pieces of me. Jessica Simpson is her sister. We know Jessica Simpson as well. And Ashley Simpson said that she rejected wearing a purity ring from her dad, Joe, at the age of 12. She said, I'm not doing that. So there have been a few mixed reactions from that. Now, her father, you see her father right here. Her father, I think, was a priest or a preacher. And now he has a boyfriend. He, he dates men now. So this was a whole mess, a whole mess. So she opened up about being a rebellious child on the Rachel Bilson's podcast. So I love Ashley Simpson. And she said, I'm not doing that. I'm not wearing a purity ring. Now I know that there are a lot of, well, not that many, but her sister wore the purity ring. Jessica Simpson, we know she married Nick Lachey and she was a virgin on her wedding night. That relationship didn't work out. She got remarried and now she has children with, you know, a, a different husband. But she kept her word to be a virgin until she got married. And um, she got married young. And Ashley Simpson, she is married, I believe, to Diana Ross's son, Evan, and they have a child. And, um, you know, some people might think, well, is it really re being rebellious? I mean, 12 years old, 12. Um, but sometimes you know who you are. You know whether or not you want to follow rules or if someone else's rules or not, um, or you want to be free to make your own decisions, you know, and that's probably, you know, that is what it was about. And okay, let's see what she said. She said that um, she reflected on her decision to turn down her father's request that she wear a purity ring as a preteen. She's now 39. And she said that she was an independent soul. Yeah, us Libras are. And she said um, she re re rejected her dad's push for her to remain a virgin until marriage. She said, I would come off way more rebellious than I even was because I was like, oh, no, I'm not doing that. I would see how my dad would be like, you can't talk to this guy. You can't talk to that guy. Here's your ring to save yourself. He tried to give me one at 12. And I said, no, thank you. I won't be telling you when I have SCX. Now, that is something. Okay. She said, even though I did not have SCX until I was 17, but I always wanted it to be open that you don't know what I'm doing. You see, and hearing something like that, I'm not a parent, but I would tell my child, I can't, I believe in having a very open relationship. I want my child, cause I have one with my mother where I could come to her and talk about anything. And some people weren't comfortable with that, but I didn't end up with out of wedlock kids and a teen, being, being a teenage mother. That didn't happen to me. And that's not to knock anybody for having out of wedlock kids. I'm just saying I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't have SCX early, re really early and stuff. And, um, okay. I would, if I had a daughter or a son, but especially a daughter and they told me at 12, you won't know what I'm doing. I don't want to hear anything like that because. The truth is I can't be with you everywhere. You can't be with your children. And I think as a 
parent, you do have a responsibility to tell your child about SEX. This is 2024. No birds in the bees, just straight up what it is. You can get pregnant the first time, um, discharge what yours should look and smell like. A guy, if his discharge is green or yellow or has a smell, what that means, the truth about all types of things, circumcision, smegma, um, all types of stuff. The reality of how your life can be completely destroyed if you end up pregnant. My mother told me straight up, you're not bringing no kids in my house. She let me know that very early. I'm not raising more children. So don't ever don't do it because I wouldn't be raising your kids, you know. Now, do I really think my mom for real, for real would have ended up being that cruel? Honestly, no, but yes, too. But she put the fear in me not to do something like that. You know, she did. And not only that, but I saw so many people who had children they didn't want. I could tell they're absolutely miserable. They can't go anywhere. They don't have any money. Their life is almost ruined, at least during that time of their life. And I didn't want that to happen to me. So I was always afraid of that ending up happening to me. And it didn't happen. You know, um, it, it can destroy a life or set you back. Sometimes it will, it, it can, it will make you mature much earlier. You know, there are a number of people who had children as teen mothers who ended up doing a fabulous job, but years of their life taken from them and having to grow up too early. But, um, so, but she knew, Ashley knew, you know, I don't want anyone with this power and authority over my body to tell me when I can and can and cannot make that decision. You know, sometimes, you know, when you're ready, so, uh, some women regret it the first time and maybe wish I could go back in time and be a virgin again. Other women don't regret it and knew they wanted it because we hit puberty just like guys. You know, as quiet as it's kept, we have desires just like them and feel things just like them. But you have to you have to prepare your child. I think you need an open relationship with your daughter to let her know she can talk to you and ask you about anything. Even if she doesn't ask, you talk to her anyway and let her know what it is and what's going on. She, I feel she should be so comfortable that if she feels she wants to finally have SEX and she can't wait anymore, if her hormones is that bad, it, well, I, it's not a bad thing. I'm just saying if it's really extreme and she feels like she can't wait anymore. Look, my mother was straight up. She put her on birth control. Now, I didn't get on birth control as a teen, but there are women who feel like that put her on birth control because, damn it, you're not going to be around all the time. And if she feels she can't wait, maybe it's pressure. Maybe she's desiring it. You don't want her to end up a, a, a baby's mama, a single mother at 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Birth control. And, of course, the use of condoms. People don't want to they don't want to talk about reality, but this country has been trying to push abstinence and it hasn't worked. It hasn't worked here. It works in other countries sometimes. And even in other countries, they do things with the same gender undercover or they go to prostitutes undercover. That's a whole different video in this country. The United States abstinence hasn't worked that great. It hasn't worked for church mothers, church children teenagers it hasn't worked a lot i mean don't get me wrong there has been a decline of teenage pregnancies especially since teen mom came out on mtv but people are human and human instinct and urges trump everything people can talk about all this stuff all day long but when your body and your mind and you have these desires and you're in love or you think you're in love and you met someone and they are doing touching you certain ways and you want certain things People make a decision and no, nothing can take that urge away. Nothing. It just comes down to the decision. Are you or are you not going to act on it? And you have to be aware of the things that can happen if you do both good and bad. So Ashley knew she wasn't down with that like her sister and she didn't rush into it. You know, her life hasn't been destroyed. She's a married woman now and had her children so it says that purity rings symbolize a commitment to abstinence before marriage. OK, stars like the Jonas Brothers, Miley Cyrus and Jordan Sparks, they had this early in their careers. 
Her sister famously wore one and pledged her virginity because she says it's something I stand on. Okay, so I'm totally not against waiting at all. You know, I had said before that virginity definitely needs to be something promoted more in the black American community, period, that there's no shame in it. Um, I have also said there are red flags to me if a guy is a certain age and hasn't been with a woman. I don't, yeah, that's just, that has, that's how I feel. Um, and I'm not going to take it back. Um, I explain why I feel that way. And um, it's cruel for a woman to have to, and a man and a woman to have to wait for so long and, and go through that torture. I don't have to say what it, we know, you know, the, you know, that's why in other countries they might get married early because they have those urges, but they don't want a bunch of out of wedlock kids running around everywhere. So they get them married off early to try to keep order and tradition and to have the babies born in wedlock because a guy, especially at, at 18, 19, 20, especially in his early 20s, it's hard for a lot of people. And it's okay to admit that, both for some women too. We're human beings. So you have to make the decision what you want to do for you. Okay, so speaking of virginity, I told you that I was going to show something from the Bible that truly disturbed me. And I know this is going to ruffle some feathers from people who are very religious, but at the end of the day, you know, those who identify as Christian, hardcore Christians, this is what's in the book that you follow. There's no, this is not being taken out of context. It's right there for you to read. There's no sugarcoating it. There's nothing you can say to fix what's in this is there, whether you like it or not. And you can try to nitpick all the good things out of it, but the bad things exist too. And there's nothing you can do to change what it says in there, which is highly highly disturbing and disgusting and sickening to me to have to read this, but I felt the need to share. I stumbled on this actually doing some research and I said, oh my God, I have to share this. So let's look at what it says on this website. Okay. So this is the website. It's called evilbible.com. Evilbible.com fighting against immorality and religion. So I actually, again, stumbled on this and this is on the topic of grapes. R-A-P-E, great, that is justified several times throughout the entire Bible, which is very shocking. So it is a number of verses and everything that has it. I'm going to skim through some of them quickly and read to you what it says. Okay, let's see. Okay, murking grape and pillage at Jabesh Gilead. Look, I didn't grow up in church, so I'm probably pronouncing some of these tribes incorrectly, but sorry. This is um, Judges 23, 10, 24. It says, so they went 12,000 warriors to Jabesh Gilead with, with orders to murk. Murk is another word for K-I-L-L. They went in with orders to murk everyone there, including women and children. This is what you are to do. Completely destroy the males and every woman who has slept with the, with the man who is not a virgin. Among the residents, okay, they, they found 400 young virgins who never slept with a man and brought them to the camp of Shiloh and the land of Canaan. Apparently, it's okay for men to sleep around, but yet you need to unalive every woman who you can prove has had a man before. Doesn't this sound like the same oppression? and barbaric nature today, always trying to control a woman's vagina and our desires and who we want and our choices. Okay, so this was even back then. It says K-L-L-L, -L, the children and the women who are not virgins. <sighs> oh my God. Okay, let, let's skim through. Okay, it says Numbers 31, 17, 18. It says um, they attacked attack Midian just like the Lord had commanded Moses and they Kate they murked the men okay it says that um okay let's skip through let's skip through okay um after they gathered they to plunder and ca the captives they brought them to Moses and Eliezer the priest and to the whole community of Israel it says that um Moses was furious with all the military commanders that had returned from battle. 
Why have you let all the women live? He demanded. Those are the very ones who follow Balmans or something advice and accuse people of Israel to rebel against the Lord. They are the ones who caused the plague, K- um, K-I-L-L, all the boys and women who have slept with the man. K-I-L-L, all the women and the boys who have slept with the man. Only the young girls who are virgins may live. You may keep them for yourselves, a.k.a. grape them. Okay, Deuteronomy 20, 10, 14 says, Okay, as you approach the town to attack the town, offer his people a term of peace. Offer them peace if they do not accept your terms um, and open the gates to you. If they say no, then all of the people inside will serve you and force labor. But if they refuse to make peace and prepare to fight, you must attack the town. When the Lord your God hands it over to you, K-I-L-L, every man in the town, but you may keep for yourselves the women, children, livestock, and other plunder. You may enjoy the spoils of your enemies that the Lord your God has given you. The spoils of war means to grape. It says keep the children to possibly grape, Keep the women to grape, take the livestock and anything else you want, because this is what God has given you, the spoils of war. Then this person said, what kind of God approves of murking grape and slavery? The laws of grape, Deuteronomy 22, 28, 29. It says, if a man is caught in the act of graping a woman who is not engaged, he must pay 50 pieces of silver to her father. He must marry the young woman because he violated her and he will never be allowed to divorce her. So they said, what kind of lunatic would make a great victim marry her own attacker? The answer, they said, is God. Okay. Death to the great victim. Deuteronomy 22, 23, 24. It says, if within the city a man comes upon a maiden, a woman who is betrothed and has relations with her, you shall bring with them both out of the gate of the city and stone them to death. The girl, because she didn't cry out for help, though she was in the city, and the man, because he violated his neighbor's wife, It's clear that God doesn't give a damn about the rape victim. He is only concerned about the violation of another man's property. Grape of the female captives, Deuteronomy 23, 10, 14. When you go out and war against your enemies and the Lord, your God, deliver them into your hands so that you can take captives. If you see a calmly woman among the captives and become armored with her, that you wish to have her as a wife, a.k.a. you get sexually aroused, you may take her home to your house. But before she may live there, she must shave her head and paint her, appear her nails and, 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 and everything after she has mourned her father and her mother for a full month, after she has cried about this stranger taking her into the home, making her shave her head, he's sexually aroused. It says that after a month of her being afraid and grieving, okay, hold on now. Um, After she has mourned her father and mother for a full month, you may have relations with her. You can grape her. You shall give her freedom if she wishes for it, but you shall sell her. You shall, okay, but you shall not sell her or enslave her since she was married to you under compulsion. So apparently God in the in the Bible is saying you can kidnap her, let her cry for a month, even if she had another man or was betrothed to give to another man. And then you can grape her, but you should not sell her to another man or enslave her because of this situation. Oh, my goodness. OK, I'll read two more. Judges 530 says they must be dividing the spoils. They took the spoils of war, grape. There must be a damsel, a woman, or two for each man. Spoils of dyed cloth as a certain, uh, something, 
and ornate should or to some of the spoil, a.k.a. you can grape her. And the last one I'm going to read is SEX slaves condoned in the Bible. Exodus 21, 7, 11 says when a man sells his daughter as a slave, she will not be free after six um, after at the end of six years as the men are. If she does not please the man who bought her, he may allow her to be bought back again, but he is not allowed to sell her to foreigner men since he is the one who broke the contract with her. And if the, if the slave girl's owner arranges for her to marry his son, he may lo no longer treat her as a slave girl. He must treat her as his daughter. If he himself marries her and then takes another wife, he may reduce her food or clothing or he uh, he may not reduce her food or clothing or fail to sleep with her as a wife. If he fails in any of these three ways, she may leave as a free woman without making any payment. Exodus 2, 7, 11, sex slavery. Do you see how loved we are as women in the Bible? I know people will bring up Mary Magdalene and the Virgin Mary and a very few amount of, of the women mentioned in the Bible, but the Bible is full of oppression towards women. I mean, look what I just read to you property graping us cat stealing us kidnapping us even i saw a verse about being able to beat beat the man or a woman slave and all that i saw it on tiktok and then i looked it up and all of what i just read to you is absolutely sickening you can i don't care you can say you're hardcore christian you can try to justify it all you want to what i just read to you is horrendous and it's is not love at all you are as a woman, if you were living back in these days, I don't care, Old Testament, New Testament, this is what was allowed to happen to you. How can you not be disturbed with what I just read to you? So that makes it even more interesting today with the story I shared of the 11 year old girl who we know was great, but yet the Bible actually condones great. You can say it was a different time. It doesn't matter what time it was. Human, human nature and stuff doesn't change just because the years changed. It should have never been allowed in the first place. So anyway, that's why. But it also said in the Bible, um, the what I read after what I saw on TikTok, it said that um, if you beat a man's wife and she gets she passes away or something oh now you can you can kil him i believe in tooth for a tooth eye for an eye foot for a foot so at the end of the day we live with this is as they say man's law here on earth and man's law on earth needs to change it's time for a change to hold these grapists accountable and take them out because I am no one's property where they can grate me anytime they feel like it. And I don't support anything that would dare say that this is allowed towards me. I'm a human being. This is absolutely horrendous what I just read to you. So let's go to the next story. Shout out to Miss D, Miss D who sent me this story. I covered this story a few months ago when it happened, when two models were found unalived in their apartments their luxury apartments two black beautiful black women and now there's an update they have found the man who murked her they have found the man who murked her they're not i don't believe they haven't showed his picture yet but um i can't give all the details right now i can't play what i, I can't play the clip because of copyright issue it might affect my channel because this is an official news clip, but this is her. OK, I don't know if he's connected to the other model that they found. We'll be getting more updates on the story. But the man who took her out literally has been captured. And I'm so happy that the cops did their job and they found this man. OK, let me scroll down to see. Um what's being said in the description box okay it says that okay again she was 31 years old her name was melissa mooney okay and she suffered blunt force trauma to her head and her torso and arms and we all know what else probably happened men don't typically attack women and just leave they usually do something else so okay 
So that's basically what I have so far. It was a Minnesota man who did this. Okay, he was from Minnesota. Okay, so again, will it be eye for an eye? It's not justice if he just sits in jail, people, to me. Justice is taking him out the way he took her out. That is justice. And I hope she gets justice, true justice. Okay, so now we have Beyonce. I've covered the stories on Beyonce recently. She's covered Essence Magazine. She has a hair care line that's out that she just she's been working on for a long time. The issue for Essence Magazine is the history of black hair. She has a number of photo shoots. She looks beautiful. And with her mother, we know her mother, Tina, was a hairstylist and uh, she knows how to do hair and uh, grew up doing Beyonce's hair and designing clothing for her and Beyonce and Destiny's Child. And um I, she now has her hair care line called Sacred that just launched. And this has to be exciting. Look at the beauty influencers that were there. Makeup artists, top makeup artists, top influencers who were there, models, okay? To see, you know, Beyonce's hair care line, test out the products. Beyonce was there, okay? They're all dressed in white. And I'm sure it was a lot of fun to be there. And this is a really great thing to see. This is really good to see. I'm sure this is a dream come true for Beyonce. We know that she had her House of Darion fashion line. And it would make sense that she's now dabbling into hair care because she grew up around this. This is what her mother did. And Beyonce was in the salon helping her mother and learning about hair. You know, her mother has helped take care of her hair since she's been performing. And it's a smart move. We know that Rihanna has Fenty and Savage Fenty lingerie. And it's good to see her diversify herself, okay, and dabble into new things, not just with music, country music now, but also clothing before and now hair care. And I heard that she was working on this for about six years. So six years is a long time to really research something, put your knowledge into something, OK, it appears she has her products for all hair types. So it's diverse for all hair types, which is very good. And I think that this is going to be very successful for her. Very successful, sacred. So Beyonce's doing it. Beyonce's doing it many different things. And, you know, why not have fun and put your hands in different things, especially when you have the money to be able to really venture out into different things and bit different businesses. So this is really good. You know, I know there will be a lot of reviews and I can't wait to see what people say about, about this. Okay, so many of you know that I was gonna touch this story, okay? This woman has TikTok all over the place in a good way. I'm so happy for her as a content creator. 17 million views on one video, 500,000. And she has inspired so many so so many her name is risa tisa i hope i said her name right she has a 50 cart series of uh, 50 episodes on tiktok called who the f did i marry and this is not made up this is her actual life and she has inspired so many there are some ideas i've had um not necessarily a 50 part series but just advice or things in life um, I have some videos that's over three minutes. Some people don't like to do that. You know, they love that TikTok was one to three minute videos. You can do 10 minute videos now, but people used to think that it would hurt them if they did 10 minute videos. But as you can see, no, 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 you can have massive, massive success. So Risa Tisa, I mean, you know, she did her series about who did she marry because she got married and the man she married lied about everything. So, so many people are inspired by her. But remember, she is being very vulnerable. She is sharing her personal business and not everybody can do it. Some people are scared to do it. They don't want to be judged. They don't want people to know what happened. They might get afraid they're going to get sued or anything. I heard her ex-husband has come out now. This is something like off of some something off a TV show or something. So 
Um, I haven't seen it, but she popped up in my feed on TikTok. So I said, okay, I'm going to check out some of her episodes on what happened. And, um, you know, so many content creators from all over the place are like, look at her success on what she did because she probably has made maybe three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars because of this. So, you know, people now look, I already had videos that long and, um, you know, I said to myself, I got stories for days on some stuff that has happened to me, some stuff, uh, people I've met. I had some ideas, but then I said, you know what, though? I don't want all my business and stories out of craziness with people, but I definitely have some advice, more advice to give and and things. I, I, I was inspired by her to to push for it. I thought about it. I put it off, but I'm inspired by her to push and do some of the ideas that I had. So shout out to uh, Miss Miss Tisa. So it says, Shukuf, this woman has the internet in shambles, a 50 part TikTok story about her husband, again, being a pathological liar. Okay, so it says that she has people glued to their phones. I'm happy to see this too, especially for a black woman content creator, because a lot of times, uh, a lot of black women don't always get this sort of popularity with their content, even when the content is really good, you know, and I love it because all women can relate. It doesn't matter what race we are. All women can relate to being with a bad man who, who lied to you and, and can have empathy. And you, and you know, it's not just women who've watched it it's also men. And I'm happy to see this because, you know, she's relatable and so many women are in this situation right now from all walks of life. So, um, check out her TikTok, okay? Risa Tisa, okay? Okay, so listen, she made the news and people said they want to see this as a, as a TV series or a movie. I won't be shocked if this is somebody on Tubi does it. Of course, pay her her coins, okay? But it says, what if this turned into a viral story? This viral story uh, was on a net as a Netflix series. What if this is on Netflix? And I've already heard of an actress saying she would like to play Teresa or Miss Nisa, Risa Tisa, that they would like to play her. And um, it says, look at the power of social media. She's getting an all expense paid trip to Paris and London like she always wanted to. Delta and the Hilton has already confirmed it. So, you know. This definitely, again, inspires a lot of us who make content to to venture out with some of our idea, our, our, our some of our ideas into different things and everything. And again, if you're willing to share your personal business and stories, this is what can happen. This is what can happen. So, again, check her out on TikTok, her series part one through 50. This story was absolutely crazy when I saw it. This Pennsylvania mother told authorities she strangled her 11-year-old son because she didn't want him to face financial hardships, okay? It says that she was convicted of strangling her son with a belt, okay? Ruth Whitehead is accused of unaliving her son because she says she didn't want him to struggle financially. 11-year-old Matthew Whitehead was found in their home this was in April of last year. It says that she was found guilty of first degree murking and rejected an insanity defense that her attorneys argued for. They wanted to her, her attorneys were trying to say she was insane when she did it. And um, she was sentenced to life in prison. OK, it says that following her arrest, OK, her family was struggling financially and she didn't want her son to grow up with these struggles. So she admitted to strangling him with the belt as he slept. The father called 911 after he noticed the door to the primary bedroom was locked and the family's Toyota, Toyota Highland, Highlander was missing. OK, they found the boy's body in the bedroom where he had fallen asleep with his mother. OK, it says that he had all these marks and stuff on him near his face and his neck. It says that they found the uh, OK, they found the missing SUV in Cape May, New Jersey, where she had driven it into the ocean. She was found walking around six miles north of the abandoned vehicle. 
They found a belt on the floor of the driver's side of the SUV. So this is insane. This is insane. First of all, if you felt like this regarding your son and you're struggling, you're mentally ill from this, you're in a depression, then I just feel like, why do that? Okay, you're suffering right now. I understand you don't want this to go on, but it's interesting. She didn't take herself out. She didn't take herself out. She didn't do anything. She she took it out on the child. She didn't uh, she didn't take her husband out. Now, her husband, why didn't she say to her husband, look, we're struggling. I'm in a depression. I'm feeling I'm having all types of thoughts. That's not normal. Maybe she felt like taking her life and said, look, you got to get another job. As the man of the house, this is serious. I need you to get to get another job, get two jobs, three jobs. I'll get a job. The, the boy was 11 years old. Seriously. And let's say because being born into poverty is not a little thing. It is a serious thing. People think about when having kids, but it's like, OK, once he turns 16 and let's say y'all are still not doing that great. You couldn't tell your son, baby, I need you to get a job at the local supermarket, okay, to help towards the bills and we'll do things for your future. You know, you can get tuition for college, okay? It's not the end, even if you have to go to community college, we'll go, we're gonna work it out. But instead she she couldn't plead in insanity if they felt like it was premeditated, you know, like she had been thinking about it for days. She didn't just snap and strangle him. No, she locked the door, had him sleep in the room with her and and then strangled him, which means that it was sort of planned out, which is why she couldn't get the insanity plea. Even if her mind had slipped and she felt it's the end, it's just the end. And I have to take my son out. He can't live like this. I mean, okay, you feel you love your son. You don't want your son to struggle financially or have a hard life. So your answer is I got to take him out. It's crazy. Someone said she could have just sent her child to a family member until she got back on her feet. People are crazy. Um, unpopular opinion. People need to have an IQ, sanity and financial test in order if they can have children or not. If, a lot of people wouldn't have kids if it came to, to, to that, to be honest with you. A lot of people wouldn't have kids. And don't get me wrong. You know, if you are a responsible person and you don't have kids, of course you think about, can I afford children? What kind of life am I going to bring them into? I don't want my children to struggle. I don't want to, them to not be able to have anything. You know, school, will they have this? Will they have that? If I have to live in a poor neighborhood, that means a poor school and bad kids around possibly, oh, my child's life might be completely destroyed. You know, people think stuff like that. And, you know, if she felt sad and had depression or felt like she wanted to take her life, that's understandable in hard times. But to take it out on your son, your innocent 11 year old son and strangle him. This is just crazy. So now she's been given life in prison. I said earlier, eye for an eye on these type of crimes. So she did that. And um, do I have to say the rest? So this is crazy. I'm going to leave this on a good note, some good news of some kind, more good news. OK, this is Chloe Bailey. We know that she and her sister, Holly Bailey, were discovered by Beyonce and she can really sing. She can really sing. I've been loving her outfits that she's been wearing lately. And you might see her in some of my fashion videos. And she's very talented. And again, it's so rare these days where you hear live singing and they sound like the album. She's in great shape. She's beautiful. She can sing. She's very talented. And I have to say, I'm happy to see where her career is going a lot more in a new direction. You know, where the, before they were trying to push a certain image on her, I didn't like, but now I see it changing somewhat and I'm happy to see that. So there's a song I play right here on my channel by Mooney Long that so many of you love. I love the song too. And Chloe sang her rendition of the song, a live acapella singing, singing it. I mean, there was the beat, but she was singing it. So I want to share that with you so you can really see Chloe's skills. The smell of your perfume. I thought I was immune. Oh, looking around this room. Can't help 
I see the traces of you This moment is so real I can't put into words how I feel Twin Where have you been? Nobody knows me Nobody. Like you do Nobody gon' love me Nobody. Why like you can't oh. even deny it Every time I try it one look at my